everyone and welcome to a new episode of the Plantex podcast series. Today, we answer some of your most asked questions about spirulina with our color specialist Matthew Sandin and our technical director Daniel Tomei. The current problem is that spirulina is not heat stable. How do you deal with that? You essentially you can you need to be aware of mm-hmm. spirulina's limitations because there isn't anything you can do to extend its heat stability. Okay. So you, what you have to understand is okay, where is its limit? Mm-hmm. How can I use it? What is the most effective way of using it? So there are things you can take into consideration. Like how long is the color going to be exposed for heat? How hot? How high is the temperature? Mm-hmm. Um, and how long will it will it be exposed to that temperature? And then mm-hmm. also the acidity of the product as well. So uh, I've seen that earlier, like a couple of weeks ago, Scott has made bread with mm-hmm. blue in it, and the yep. blue was actually very good. Yeah. It was very vibrant. Yep. So what kind of blue did he use, or why did he... That was not in that black bread. But it did survive the heat of... Yeah, so obviously he had to put in a higher dosage. Yeah. So uh, there will be some color yeah. um, degradation. Okay. Uh, but so you came for that by adding in increased amounts and then it will fade but it will still have a, a usable yeah. amount. You'd take the same approach with red beet as well. You'd overdose yeah. slightly, yeah. Knowing, exactly. knowing that that heat process is going to degrade the, the pigment slightly, so you overdose. Okay. Uh, is there a certain application where blue is mostly used for? Or is it just mostly used in everything? So blue actually is more Importantly, you, there isn't many naturally blue occurring things in nature, actually. No. So, so you're not regularly consuming blue coloured foods. Yeah. Blue, from a colour house perspective, is useful to us because it's used as a subcomponent to make other colours. Oh, okay. Right. So we will blend blue with yellow to make a green colour. Okay. So that gives it um, an alternative to copper chlorophyll. Or with a red to make purple. Sure. Okay. So that, I would say that's probably, I mean, blue coloured food products. Would you products, say not, beverages maybe? Be- beverages are uh, probably yeah, like sports drinks, sports yeah. drinks, um, confectionery, yeah. like icing, oh, yeah. like the that, candies maybe. Butter. Candies yeah. and beverage, I would say. They, uh, yeah, so also onto, it's used to coat confectionery like Smarties. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can some colours lose their heat stability uh, with any factor time or process so, or probably not the the only thing that I would say might affect heat stability is acidity. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Is there anything else? I don't know about heat stability, but light stability is definitely a factor. Okay. Um, so when you're emulsifying certain pigments, so for instance curcumin, mm-hmm. if you emulsify that with polysorbate eighty, it almost removes its light stability. It's terrible. Okay. Um, so there are ways around it, but mm-hmm. but using the AT uh, in particular removes its ability to be stable in, okay. in UV. And do you think, like in the future, we would have like a range of coloring foodstuffs that would actually be uh, stable in all situations? Um, potentially, yeah, potentially, because we're always discovering new and different ingredients to use. Okay. Um, which have different properties depending on the application they want to be used in. So yes, potentially there, there may be a case for that. What was the last colouring food stuff that has proven to be stable that didn't used to be? Uh, probably something like that butterfly pea extract that Dan was talking about. Say the name again? Butterfly pea. Butterfly pea, okay. Yeah, yeah. it's a stable blue colour, uh, heat stable. Okay. Um, to replace uh, spirulina, mm-hmm. because spirulina is uh, not heat stable. Yeah. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. To know more about the products we offer, visit our website www.plantex.com and follow our LinkedIn page, Plantex Ingredients. All of these links and more will be in the description of this episode. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.